<laughs> Hello and welcome. I'm Peter, and we're here to make progress, not perfection. But on that way to progress, we're gonna have to learn one of the more popular characters, Dragonov. We're gonna go over the character's strengths, weaknesses, punishment tools, and key moves. This is going to be an introductory guide like all my other guides, so it won't cover everything about the character, but enough to get you started. Let's go. First and foremost, let's start with the strengths. And number one is going to be poking. Dragonov has really, really good pokes. He's got a good jab, he's got good jab strings, he's got good mids, uh, and a variety of them at that as well. So the next area that Dragonov truly excels at is wall pressure. All of these pokes that we had previously mentioned that make Dragonov so good get way better at the wall because, well, one, the opponent can't go anywhere, and two, a lot of them have strings attached to them and mashing at the inopportune time can result in a wall splat. To facilitate Dragonov's wall pressure, he's got some of the best wall carry combos. It's never a matter of if you're going to get to the wall, but really how you're going to get to the wall. And to uh, clarify my point on wall carry, this stage right here is Hammerhead. And uh, Dragonov is one of the few characters in the game that can carry wall to wall on this and still get a wall combo at the end. Pretty good. Another strength of Dragonov's is his throw game. He's got a complete throw game with a one command grab, a two break command grab, and a one plus two command grab. So all of this added together with these throws and pokes is what makes him really good as a close quarters fighter. One of the most glaring weaknesses of Dragonov is his tracking. Tools such as jabs, down forward ones, down forward fours, these integral tools that Dragonov has have horrendous tracking. Check this out. So I'm gonna set Kazumi to guard and then sidestep left, right? This jab can be sidestep left, down forward one can be sidestep left, down forward four literally goes through her. Now I'm gonna set this to sidestep right. Jab into jab, jab into down forward one, jab into down forward four. This is a problem because most characters in the game who have a down forward one of some sort, it tracks to one particular side, but not the other. Another weakness of Dragonov is his lack of counter hitting. And not to say that Dragonov's bad at counter hitting, he's got counter hit things that he can do, such as one, two, one, this is a counter hit launcher, uh, or something like uh, down back two, one, two, something like this. But these are all built into strings. He's not very good at single hitting counter hit tools. For instance, most characters in the game have some sort of a form of magic four that they can throw out, that if it happens to get blocked, no big deal. Or another equivalent of this for Armor King would be something like a back one, right? It's a counter hit launcher that if it does get blocked, no big deal, it's a single hitting move. In the case of Dragonov, he doesn't have those single hitting attacks that grant a counter hit launcher that you can just YOLO throw out. He has to rely on his opponents to kind of press into these types of strings. Another part of Dragonov's weaknesses is his defensive tools. When he's really getting pressured down, Dragonov is very limited in the pool of defensive tools that he really has. Uh, aside from things like jabs and dick jabs, down back fours, these generic tools, he doesn't really have anything outstanding. Sure, he has a parry, but um, aside from that, his other tools that he has are unsafe. Things like uh, backswing blows, or in some rare scenarios, I guess you could use down two as a panic tool to use as a defensive option. He's really got to be on point with being able to backdash out of pressure or sidestep or just being able to make a hard read and ducking something. To round out the last of Dragonov's most glaring weaknesses, it's going to be his block punishment. At 10 frames, he really doesn't get much. He gets 18 damage and some good plus frames, but that's about it. And then for 12 frames, I suppose this is all right, but he has no 13 and his 14 frame Punisher is really lackluster, to be honest. As for his wall standing punishment, 
Wall Standing 4 is just kind of generic stuff that he has. And yeah, he does have a wall bouncing 12 frame Wall Standing Punisher. Ooh, really good. Except hitboxes are a real thing. Yeah, his block punishment is really something that's um, more to be desired. Now on to block punishment. For 10 frames, Dragonov just gets 2-1. The damage here at 18 is pretty lackluster, but the frames you get from this is actually pretty good. For 12 frames, Dragonov just has 4-1. The damage here again, not so great at 27, but the frames that you get is very good. Coincidentally, this is also happens to be your generic hopkick punisher for minus 13 frame stuff as well. Skipping right along, we have Dragonov's 14 frame block punisher, back three. This is kind of a niche block punishment tool, and it's usually dedicated to moves that are minus 14 that have some sort of pushback, like Brian's one plus two, two. If you try to use your 12 frame punisher in this situation, you're not gonna reach. But if you use back three, it will. At 15 frames, your block punisher of choice is gonna be down forward two. This is majority of the time, I would say 90% of the time, going to be what you use for minus 15 frame attacks. And being a launcher, it ain't bad. For a niche 15 frame block punisher, Dragonov has up forward one. This thing has incredible range and it's mostly used for attacks that have lots of pushback. So check this out, Brian's wall standing one, down forward two will whiff. However, if we do up forward one in this situation, it hits. And afterwards, you can do quarter circle forward one plus two as a follow-up or quarter circle forward two as a follow-up. And finally, at 17 frames, Dragonov has forward one plus two. Now, this attack is almost exclusively used for attacks that have great amounts of pushback or as a long range whiff punisher, right? And that's because this has long range. So much so that it's almost a reliable punisher all the time against Death Fist. Now on to while standing punishment. For 11 frames, Dragonov just has the generic while standing four, and um, that's pretty much about it. Not much else to say. For a 12 frame while standing attack, Dragonov's got three options. He's got while standing one plus two, he's got while standing one two, and he's also got while standing one three. All three of these options are completely viable. It just depends on what situation you're in and what you would prefer. Dragonov's best 12 frame while standing attack out in the open and away from walls is going to be while standing one two. This attack is fantastic because it leaves the opponent standing and leaves you at massive plus frames after this ballerina spin. So you can enforce a mix up of some sort with something like a down forward one or a down two, this kind of stuff. However, the main weakness weakness of while standing 1-2 is its range on that first hit. Here, I'll show you. I'll move Dragonov back a little bit and then have Kazuya do down back 4. Notice that the first hit completely whiffed and this is where while standing 1 plus 2 comes into play. If I move him back to around here, while standing 1 plus 2 consistently hits every single time. So you never have to worry about range issues with while standing 1 plus 2. And at the wall, more often than not, your best 12 frame wall standing punisher is gonna be wall standing one three, as it is a wall bounce, and that's pretty freaking good. But uh, just to show you, all three of these attacks, wall standing one plus two, wall standing one two, and wall standing one three, give you great potential for wall damage because they either splat or they're a wall bounce. At the 15 frame mark for while standing punishers, Dragonov just gets a boring old while standing two. There's not a whole lot to note about this, except for the fact that the range at which this hits is better than you might think. So just keep that in mind. And lastly, for minus 23 frame lows, or basically all stagger lows, Dragonov just gets the universal delayed hop kick. There's not much else to say about this, so let's move on to the key moves. Alright, onto the key moves. First up is 1-1. This is a very fast 
high high non-jailing string. Primarily, it's used as a checking tool to help you determine whether or not your opponent likes to mash buttons after blocking one of your jabs. And secondarily, it can be used as a stagger string pressure tool since 1-1 one, one goes into the extension 1-1-3, one, one, with the last hit being a safe on block mid wall splatting attack. Should the second jab connect as a counter hit, well, then the last hit is guaranteed. While 113 does end in a safe mid, know that the second hit of the string is a high and it can be ducked if the first jab is blocked. Good players will smell this coming, so don't get too predictable. 121. This is Dragunov's fastest counter hit attack string. The full string is completely guaranteed if the first or the second jab lands as a counter hit. Use this string only as a hard call out on opponents who are mashing out of turn or are not checking you properly on their plus frames. Two things to keep in note. Be aware that this string is minus 14 on block, meaning it's quite unsafe. And even if the one two lands, the last hit of the string can be blocked if there were no counter hits. Down forward one is Dragunov's generic mid poke. Use this attack as a quick check on opponents who might be crouching or as a fast frame trap when you have four or more frames of advantage. And depending on the matchup, Dragunov's down forward one can in some circumstances be used as a tracking tool to prevent opponents from sidestepping right. From his down forward one, there's the extension down forward one four. And this is a mid high non jailing attack. Even if the down forward one connects, the four can be blocked or it can be ducked. If down forward one lands as a counter hit, however, the four is guaranteed. It is best used when the opponent has their back against the wall as the last hit is a wall splat. Just don't get too predictable as good players will duck the second hit of the string and they'll launch you. Continuing on with the mids, we have down forward four. This is Dragunov's fastest mid poke coming out in 12 frames. It grants pushback on hit, and on block, allowing you to set up some great whiff punishment opportunities. But it barely gives any frames on hit and is massively minus on block and has no tracking whatsoever. Use this attack to primarily poke at the opponent from a distance and to create whiff punishment openings for yourself. While standing four is Dragunov's 11 frame a block punisher from Crouch and is also one of his most crucial mid pokes, arguably one of his best mid pokes. To effectively utilize this attack, it's best done instantly with the inputs down, down forward, neutral, four. While standing four grants almost identical frames on hit as his down forward one, but has the added bonus of slightly more damage significantly more range and way better tracking. Use this attack as a long ranged mid poke. For another mid poke, we have down back two. While slightly slower than his down forward one, down back two has much better tracking to Dragunov's right side. That's to say it deals quite well with opponents who sidestep left. Down back two has the extension down back two one and down back two one two. This extension can be massively, massively delayed to create stagger string pressure. Now, downback 2-1 is minus 10 on block, plus 1 on hit, and is mid-mid. While unsafe on block, the last hit of the string, downback 2-1-2, is a launcher, which is oftentimes reason enough for opponents to not try to punish downback 2-1 on block. Note that the last hit of the string is minus 14, meaning some characters will launch you if they block this. Continuing on with the mid pokes, we have back two. In some ways, this attack is very similar to down back two because both of these attacks start up in 14 frames and have moderate tracking to Dragunov's right side. What's interesting about back two is that Dragunov recovers crouching. This is especially useful against opponents who love to mash fast high buttons after blocking an attack. For opponents who might be going for a slower mid attack, you can try using a while standing four after using back two to interrupt them. Out of back two, there's also the extension back to one. While I wouldn't overly abuse this attack since it is a mid high non jailing string, every once in a while, once you've conditioned the opponent to expect a while standing four after back two, you can occasionally throw out back to one as this gives good frames on hit. The last of the mid strings we're going to talk about is out of Dragunov's back four. Now, 
on its own, Back 4 is rarely ever used since it's kind of sluggish to come out in 15 frames with no tracking whatsoever. But what makes it salvageable as a move is its extensions. Back 4 2 is a mid mid safe on block string. On hit, it guarantees dragging off plus 4 frames, forces the opponent into crouch, and you get a guaranteed frame trap with down forward 1 if they want to mash. This is a pretty decent safe mid mid string to throw out in neutral. And the counterpart to this is back 4 3. This is a mid high safe on block string. It's best to use this attack near the wall since the second hit of the string does grant a wall splat. Just be aware to not be overly predictable with it as it doesn't jail and it can be ducked. To prevent this, make sure to condition the opponent with plenty of back 4 twos before trying to attempt back 4 3. For low attacks, Dragunov mainly has two good lows, down 2 and down back 4. Down 2 is going to be your primary low attack. It starts up reasonably fast, high crushes, and tracks extremely, extremely well. It might as well just be one of his homing moves. On hit, it forces both players into crouch. On counter hit, it grants massive, massive frames. Nothing here is guaranteed. And um, the trick with this move is to make sure to throw out just enough down twos to chip away at your opponent's health, but not so many that you end up getting low parried or even hop kicked. Outside of down 2, Dragunov's main low is going to be his down back 4. This move comes out extremely fast, high crushes, and stops sidesteps to the left. Use this attack to disrupt opponent's momentum, and in a pinch, you can use that as a panic move. Dragunov really doesn't shine when it comes to homing attacks. Two out of his three homing attacks are slow and fairly unrewarding which is what makes back 3 his best homing attack that he has. This attack comes out quite quickly in 14 frames, grants massive frames on hit and wall splats if the opponent is close enough to the wall. The main drawback of course is that it is a high and it's pretty bad on whiff recovery. Four ranged whiff punishers look no further than quarter circle forward 1 and forward 1 plus 2. Quarter Circle Forward 1 is a long ranged high attack that, on hit, crumple stuns and grants you a combo opportunity. On block, it's only minus 3 frames, which makes it an ideal launcher to use for whiff punishing since if your timing was bad and it gets blocked, no big deal, you still have the opportunity to sidestep incoming attacks afterwards. It even tracks quite well to opponents who are sidestepping and sidewalking left. Forward 1 plus 2 is a long ranged high attack that instant screws on hit. This attack has slightly more range than quarter circle forward 1 and the input is way easier, but it's much more negative on block. And it has horrible, horrible tracking. Regardless, it's a long range whiff punisher and uh, the input for it is quite easy. When it comes to plus on block attacks that lock the opponent down, Dragunov has no shortage of this. For starters, his wall running 2 is an oppressive tool. It grants plus 6 frames on block, pushes the opponent closer and closer and closer to the wall with each iteration, and it starts up his offense. Due to the frames of advantage, Dragunov has many options to dissuade the opponent from mashing buttons afterwards. On hit, it knocks down. At the wall, it wall splats, and it floor breaks. If the opponent doesn't hold back to roll after the hit, Dragunov is guaranteed a stomp afterwards. On counter hit, it's a full on launcher, so that's pretty good. And for beginners, I'm going to say it right now, it's not necessary to learn instant wall running twos, because your time is better spent learning how to properly sidestep, how to whiff punish, and how to poke with this character. Take note that while running 2 has terrible tracking. Over the season since I guess season 2, it's been nerfed a little bit each and every time. While running 1 plus 2, this is Dragunov's Rage Drive and it's a souped up, amped up version of his while running 2. This on block forces the opponent into crouch and grants Dragunov plus 5 frames. Instead of launching on counter hit like his while running 2, while running 1 plus 2 can just launch on normal hit. 
Back 1 plus 2 is another oppressive tool. On block, it grants Dragunov plus 6 frames, just like his wall running 2, keeps the opponent close, and starts up his offense. On hit, Dragunov is guaranteed a down 3 plus 4 stomp follow-up. This attack has pretty bad tracking and starts up very slowly, so it's best to use when the opponent has their back against the wall and is kind of hesitant to press buttons. Keep in mind that this attack has no tracking to sidestep left. Dragunov lacks a generic hop kick for crushing low attacks, but he does have a pseudo orbital in the form of up forward 4. This is a safe on block mid attack that evades lows. If up forward 4 hits, follow up with down 4 1 3 for a mini combo. On floor break stages, this gets even better because up forward 4 followed by down 3 4 starts a full on combo. That's pretty good. While this attack may look like it has some tracking to it, uh, it can be sidewalked, particularly with sidewalk left. And because of the slow startup of the attack, know that uh, opponents can float you out of this with their fast attacks. To round out the last of the key moves, we got throws. Forward forward 1 plus 2 is Dragunov's 1 plus 2 throw. It deals good damage, provides good Oki setup opportunities afterwards, and on floor break stages, it's a combo starter. The last of his two throws are going to be his one and his two break throws, forward one plus four and forward two plus three. Besides the purpose of just dealing 40 damage to the opponent, these two command grabs have side switching utilities. If your back is to the wall and your opponent has bad throw breaks, well, use these grabs to net damage and reposition yourself away from the wall. Alrighty guys, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this beginner's Dragunov guide. For those of you trying to pick up this character, I hope this helped you guys figure out what were the key moves that you should be using for this character, what are his strengths and weaknesses, the, the punishment tools, all that snazzy stuff. So with that, take care, and I'll see you guys on the next guide. Bye! Thanks for watching guys and joining me on this video. Also, thank you so much patrons for your ever so gracious support. Without you, this would have not have been possible. And if you're new here and you like what you see, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon. Below in the descriptions as always, I also have my links to my Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon page. See you next time!